welcome to atcm today we are going to discuss about a one year old child who was brought to india with history of uh, two episodes of seizure that day morning okay okay so so a one year old child was brought male child was brought to india with history of two episodes of seizure that day morning the last episode was about 45 minutes before coming to the hospital and he was brought in an ambulance from directly from home to the hospital okay and just before coming to the hospital he had two episodes of vomiting on the way and actually they wiped clean and everything after that he was coming brought into the going to the hospital and as soon as he was brought to the hospital uh, we uh, started shifting him from the ambulance to the ed mm. and <clears throat> while he was being shifted to the ed actually he suddenly became unresponsive so we rushed him immediately to the er priority area and started assessing him so my initial impression was actually i was observing him while he was being shifted to the ed and my initial impression he was unresponsive the child was unresponsive and when we quickly palpated the brachial pulse it was absent okay so the child was in cardiac arrest for any other patient we would have gone for like our pediatric assessment triangle with appearance breathing and uh, circulatory circulation which we assess all this criteria but this child on arrival was unresponsive without a uh, palpable pulse okay so, so let's let's wait so we have a one year old child hmm. you had a background history of the child had a seizure hmm. and has been child has been brought to the hospital hmm. on the assessment to the hospital on the way to the hospital some in between the child has become unresponsive hmm. or uh, only after child, arrival to the er after arrival uh, uh, while the child was being shifted from ambulance to the er okay uh. so the child was found unresponsive hmm. and uh, when you have a child unresponsive you will go for the bls algorithm mm. that's what you said you have checked for response the child is not responding mm. and the next immediate thing is you have to call for help mm. you have already a team available so mm. the team is ready to receive the patient mm. the next thing was to look for whether any breathing or any palpable pulse is there mm. since it's been a one year old child mm. you have gone for a brachial pulse mm. so uh, if it's an uh, more than one year old child you could have gone for the carotid uh, if it is infants you have to go for a brachial pulse mm. and how long you need to assess the pulse is for minimum at, of 5 seconds, seconds but not, not more than 10 seconds so you have assessed a pulse and you have found out that this child is not having a brachial palpable brachial pulse mm. so you went ahead with cpr mm. so that is a story mm. this triangle we will do only for if the patient is conscious oriented mm. and if the patient is not in cardiac arrest so mm. if the patient comes to you the patient is in cardiac arrest you will go to the bls algorithm mm. the patient is otherwise not in cardiac arrest you go for the pediatric assessment triangle where we look for the appearance of the child breathing. color of the child and breathing of the child so the a b c whatever we have discussed you have to see for. Mm. okay continue So, given the situation, the child is unresponsive, mm. not breathing, and <coughs> not having a pulse. So, you have more than one rescuer. That mm. is the scenario. Mm. So, uh, you have more than one rescuer available in the ER, mm. and you have a child with cardiac arrest. Mm. Okay. So, as soon as I found out the child is unresponsive, mm. I started CPR. Okay. Initi- CPR was initiated. I alerted the team around the uh, ER, and I immediately started chest compression. So, as soon as people started coming in, uh, we started our uh, compression with the team. Okay. So I so I just wanted to ask you what is the compression ventilation ratio that you did for the child. So initially when I started myself it was like a continuous compression with 100 to 120 compressions per minute I was continuously giving compression. As soon as one more team member arrived I asked him to like uh, start ambuing so the ratio became 15 is to 2. So when you have a single rescuer uh-huh. the ratio is 30 is to 2. 2 and when we have more than one rescuer it is 15 is to 2. Mm. You can either use thumb encircling method or mm. you can use the two finger two method finger. whichever is comfortable for you. Mm. So So the crux of the thing is that you have to continue compression mm. 30 is to 2 when you have a single rescuer but mm. in emergency room we have more than one rescuer so mm. definitely we can straight away start with 15, 15 is to 2 mm. and other person can do the back mass ventilation mm. who is the mm. can do the back mass mm. ventilation so what are the things that you have to maintain when you are doing a compression what are the quality checks that you need to do while doing a chest compression mm. Now, especially in this child Uh, one thing is actually uh, proper technique the way we are holding the child you know okay. the way you are placing the mask and everything the uh, thing is actually we have to ma- maintain a minimum compression rate of 100 to 120 okay and we have to provide at least adequate depth of at least 5 cm we have to provide or maybe 5 cm in a child uh, or 1/3 AP, AP, AP diameter. diameter so that is the ch- hmm. for children it is 1/3 AP, 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 AP diameter and yeah. we have to like provide adequate uh, time for chest recoil no, and point. also we have to minimize the interruptions between the cpr and you have to avoid excessive ventilation, ventilation. Hmm. so these are the five qualities that you need to remember so we hmm. can just review it back 100 to 120 compression in a minute one third of the chest uh, ap, AP diameter, diameter should be compressed mm-hmm. and the next thing is avoid excessive ventilation, ventilation. and add out okay. time for chest Just recoil like, yeah. and minimize interruptions mm-hmm. whatever be the interruption is more it should not be more than 10 seconds okay. if you want to do a pulse check in between one uh, in between after 2 minutes you need to not more than 10, 10 seconds. seconds so that is the most important thing mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm.
<laughs> so as the <coughs> team members keep coming in, I assumed myself as the team leader and okay. played roles for managing airway with ambu ventilation. One okay. person was assigned for chest compression. One person was asked to get an IV access and get ready with medication. Medication. And one person was asked to connect the child to uh, the uh, cardiac monitors and also connect the defibrillator. Okay. Suppose this is the child. Mm. So one person taking care of the airway. Mm. Second person he can do the compression, compression here. So the second person. And third person can give the drugs, mm. and fourth person who can give the defibrillator, mm. and the team leader can stay here, mm. and other person who can record can stay here. So mm. this will be the ideal thing, mm. and uh, these two people can switch over in between. Mm. So airway person and who is doing the chest compression mm. can move in between. Mm. So that is the minimum required. Ideal will be six. Mm. If you don't have six, then you can Depending combine the job. Maybe this two job together, this two job together. Mm. You have to combine the job, and you have to mm. find a person. Mm. So that is the ideal will be a six person. Mm. Okay. So since we have adequate members, we arrange a team like this and okay. we continued our CPR. Okay. Uh, so this is the basic algorithm which will come in after some time. Okay. Uh, so chest compressions were initiated with ambu ventilation to finish the two ratio. Mm. And then... What is the most important thing that you need to do when you are doing back mass ventilation? When you are doing back mass ventilation, what is the most important thing that you need to take care of, especially in a child or what would be the age group, it's an adult or child, what is the most important thing that you need the to take care The thing is for? actually we have to look for uh, minimum chest rise, adequate chest rise. Adequate chest rise, that's mm. the most important thing. Mm. See here the child probably would have aspirated. Mm. It is looks like an hypoxic arrest. Whatever mm. be the history that you are giving, mm. because the child had a seizure, maybe the child have aspirated mm. or the uh, central suddenly the simulation has got cut off and the child has got a disordered breathing mm. and went into a cardiac arrest. Mm. So first of all, the most important thing you have to, while you are doing back mass ventilation, uh, ideally you can check the oral airway. If there is any secretion, you can just do the suctioning. Mm. Otherwise, the back mass ventilation will not be adequate. Mm. And then you have to give a proper back mass ventilation mm. and make sure that there is adequate chest rise while giving your... Uh, back mass ventilation. Mm. So that is very very important. You have to because in adult patients sometimes it is difficult to see the chest rise mm. but in children you will be able to see the chest rise. Mm. So you have to make sure that mm. adequate chest rise is there while doing your back mass ventilation. Okay. okay. <coughs> so once the uh, defibrillation everything was ready we stop the compressions and assess the rhythm. Okay. So uh, we can just refresh again. Mm. So we have a child who has been brought unresponsive. You check for the pulse. There is no pulse. You activate the emergency response system. Mm. You started compression at 30 is to 2. Then later on to 15 is to 2. Mm. And a moment a defibrillator is available. You have connected to the defibrillator. Mm. So that is the sequence of events that mm. has happened right now. Mm. So you have connected to the defibrillator mm. and what you have seen? So we stopped compressions and looked at the rhythm. Okay. We, what we found was a flat line. So what you is a flat line flat here. Line, okay. Yeah. So we immediately check the leads for like any disconnection or anything. Okay. And we adjusted the power and gain. Okay. And make sure that it was a proper assistor. Okay. So we have confirmed that it is an assistory. Mm. So what we have right now is an assistory. Mm. So what do you have to do when you have an assistory? Assistory actually our treatment protocol is mainly to do compressions and give uh, initiative give epinephrine as early as possible. What is the dose of epinephrine that you wanted for a one year old child here? Mm. To be assumed to be 10 kgs. Mm. So the dose is actually in children we dilute the epinephrine which we usually get in our department that is actually 1 in 1000 uh, concentration we dilute with 10 ml of saline. Okay. So we get uh, 1 in 10,000. 1 in 10,000 dilution. So and it will be what is available we have will be 1 in 1000. Mm. So that we have to clarify this is what is available with us. Mm. So we will add 9 ml, 9 ml mm. of sa normal saline, saline, normal saline to it. So it will become 1 in 10,000. 10, so the most important thing that you need to remember is that mm. each ml, one ml will be 0 0.1, 0.1 milligram. milligram. So what is the dose that is required so for a child? Dose will be either 0 0.1 milligram per kilogram. 0 0.01 0 0 0 milligram per kilogram. So or, that is the mm. dose that is required. Mm. So here assume to be 10 kg. So how much you want will be 0 0.1. 0 0.1 mg that is... 1 ml. 1 ml. So, 1 ml of this diluted solution you need to give mm. to this patient. Mm. So, that is the dosing that you need mm. to remember. So, this dosing you have to be very clear. Mm. What is available is 1 in 1000. You have to dilute it, mm. make it 1 in 10,000. 1 ml will be 0.1 mg mm. and you calculate the required dose and you give mm. that to the patient mm. every 3 to, every five, three to minutes. 5 minutes. Okay. Or also we can use the formula <coughs> 0.1 ml per kg also we can use. 0.1 ml per kg also mm. you can use. Same. Okay. same. But the issue was actually uh, even after we see, uh, started CPR, we couldn't get an IV access in the initial phase. Okay, so you haven't got an IV access. So what are the options that is available for you? Uh, one thing is actually we can like, uh, if possible, we have an like a experienced person can uh, one more give it one more try. Okay, so uh, how when will you decide? Okay, this is a failed IV. Mm. 
So this IV access is failed. I have to activate my next plan. So when will you decide that? When an experienced person fails to get an IV access for more than two times, two times. you have to decide that this is a failed IV and you have to go for an alternative method. Mm. And the preferred one will be in a child here, it will be IU access. So intraosseous access. So that is a preferred one. Mm. So uh, what was done for this child? But this patient actually we initially uh, uh, because of VC access, we were able to like intubate the child early. So we intubated the child mm -hmm. and gave through ET uh, the medications. See, ideally this would have been what you have to done is an IU access. When mm -hmm. you have a failed IV access for two times, mm -hmm. child intubation and all it's okay. Mm -hmm. You can give drugs through ET. You mm -hmm. can remember the drugs lean that we will mm -hmm. discuss. Mm -hmm. But the most important one you have to go for an IU access will be a preferred one in this time. Mm -hmm. Where will you go for an IU access? Uh, we can actually go uh, below, uh, like the upper part of tibia. Upper part of the tibia. Or the, or the lower part of femur. Or you can just see the tibial tuberosity. Uh, tuberosity. Just below the tibial tuberosity mm. where the growth plates are not there. You mm. can go for a normal bone marrow set and mm. you can get an... Uh, even if bone marrow is not available, bone marrow set is not available and IV access set is not available. Mm. Even a large bore IV access we can give. Mm. And all the drugs can be given via an IV access. The same dilution. So ideally it will be an IV access but... We didn't go for, you didn't do an IU access, you mm. went, since the child was intubated, mm. you went ahead uh, with a 4.5 size cuffed tube. Mm. So, one year old, what will be the ideal size of ET tube that is required? Uh, we go with the formula H by 4 plus mm. 4. Okay. For, uh, for uncuffed and oh. plus 3.5 for cuffed. Okay. So, you, you selected a 4.5, oh. maybe 4, 4.5 should be ideal, mm. but whenever you have a cuff, uncuffed tube, one size should be more. Mm. That is a usual thing. Mm. When you have a cuffed tube, you can uh, maybe 3, with 4 should be, should have been enough. Mm. So, and uh, 3 times, 3 times, 3 times the uh, size of the uh, ET tube will be the angle of mouth, mm. so into 3. Mm. So, that is 4.5, uh, around uh, 13, 13, that is what you have kept. Mm. Now, what all drugs that you can give for an endotracheal tube and how will you deliver this drug? Ah. What all drugs you can give? In children, actually, we prefer to give uh, 10 times the recommended dose. Ah, th ah. 3 to 10 times. 3 to 10 times. 3 to 10 times, that is a recommended dose. Mm. If, example, we wanted to give 0 0.1 mg of adrenaline here mm. so how much we need to give we so need we to give 0 0.3 mm. to 1 mg mm. of adrenaline we mm. need to give mm. so that will be the requirement mm. 3 to 10 times but 10 times might be sometime because giving it 10 ml mm. and pushing to the child might be more so mm. we can start with 3 to 10 times so mm -hmm. 3 is the minimum that is required and mm. maximum will be 10 times mm -hmm. and which all drugs that you can give what are the drugs that you can remember to ET uh, uh, we can give uh, this thing uh, adrenaline can be given epinephrine uh, then uh, naloxone Naloxone, atropin, atropin, uh, lidocaine, lidocaine. Passive. So lean uh, is the lean is the uh, mnemonic that you can remember. Mm -hmm. Lignocaine, epinephrine, atropin, naloxone. naloxone. So, so these are the drugs that you can give via ET2. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have given uh, three times or ten times the dilution of mm -hmm. adrenaline to mm -hmm. this child, mm -hmm. and CPR was continued. Mm -hmm. Continue. And after some time, actually, uh, we give ten times the dosage, and mm -hmm. it was repeated every three to five minutes. Okay. And after something we were able to secure an IV access mm. with the 24 gauge and mm. after that we started giving through IV. Okay. So, uh, in the first three cycles we again got acestrol only. Okay. So, at that so, the child was, we will repeat the sequence, unresponsive child, CPR initiated, acestrol, you started first, you intubated the child, mm. you secured a definite airway. Mm. Usually that might come later on, mm. but here you could secure a direct, uh, secure an um, airway because the primary reason for the arrest could have been a hypoxic arrest. Mm. So, intubating would have been got a priority. So, you mm. went ahead and intubated the child and you gave drugs via your ET tube mm. and you started continuing assessing the child. Mm. And after every two cycles, it was asystole only. After every assessment, two yeah. minutes of assessment, it was asystole mm. only. Mm. And simultaneously, you looked for the reversible causes yeah. of cardiac arrest. Mm. Okay. So, the first thing is hypervolemia. The child had two episodes of vomiting before coming to the hospital. Okay. So, there's one possibility of hypervolemia is there. Okay. Then hypoxia, the child may have aspirated. So primary most likely looks like a hypoxic hypoxia. cardiac arrest here. Mm. From whatever available history that you have. Then mm. hydrogen ion, yeah. hypoglycemia, hypo or hyperkalemia, mm. Mm. pneumothorax, uh. tamponine, toxins, thrombosis. These are all unlikely. Mm. These are all unlikely in this style. The mm. most common would have been this mm. or this mm. or maybe we are not sure acidosis. Mm. Secondary to uh, respiratory arrest and acidosis can uh, develop. Okay. Mm. So, the temperature was initially normal and also hypoglycemia was 124 milligram per deciliter. Okay. So, from the fourth cycle, we got a VF. Okay. 
so you have got an white complex irregular rhythm mm. so that is what you have got mm. so you have got a white complex irregular mm. rhythm like this mm. and uh, white complex irregular rhythm what we can call it as an ventricular fibrillation mm. so what has done you have done for this patient now so this at this point we plan to give him like deflatory shock okay the, so what is the uh, shock energy that you need initially we start with 2 to 4 joules per kilogram so start with 2 joules per kg mm. so we have taken as 20 kg so we can go for Mm, 20. So 10 kg, 20 joules we can start off, mm. then you can into 2, mm. twice it, mm. up depend, double the dose up depending maximum upon 10. maximum of 10 or maximum of the adult dose that mm. is 200 mg. Mm. So that is the dose that is, uh, sorry, 200 joules, mm. 200 joules. So initially we gave 20 joules and the second cycle again showed VF only, so okay. we made it 40. 40. And the third cycle, uh, we got a rhythm, like an organized rhythm. Okay, so you got an organized rhythm at this point of time. So hmm. what do you have done? Uh, so we immediately palpated the pulse and okay. pulse was present. So pulse was present. If the pulse was not there, what would have been done? Then we call it a pulseless electrical activity. activity then you need to continue, continue the signal. Okay. Like a non algorithm. Okay. Then? So at this point, we have an organized rhythm with pulse. Mm. So we had, we consider it as ROSC or return of spontaneous return circulation. Return of spontaneous circulation. Mm. And now we go for the uh, further management of ROSC. Return of spontaneous circulation. Uh, so we manage post cardiac, we start into post cardiac arrest. Okay. So starting again from the airway. So at this point, the airway is secured by ET. Airway is already secured uh, with so, an ET2. Uh, so we connect him to the ventilator. Okay. Uh, since he didn't have any lung pathology, we start with 6 to 8 ml per kg tidal volume when all the settings were made. And then we went with breathing part. Breathing actually about 40% saturation. Oh. Ah. So the rec recommended is actually uh, ah. 94 to 98% ah, is good That enough. is only 94 to even 99 is more 99. than enough. Mm. That is the recommended. Mm. No need to have 100%. This is the initial, this thing, after that we again tightened it back to this okay. range. So the initial finding was 100% with 40. Then mm. we made it between 94 to 99. That is only required. Mm. So circulatory part, we got a blood pressure of 82 by 30. What is the target that you wanted? Uh, blood the, pressure? The formula is 70 uh, plus 2 into... 70 plus... 2 into H. 2 into H. Uh -huh. So for a here, a systolic BP so, of 72 two. Uh -huh. would have been above the... Uh, above the 50th percentile. Above the 50th percentile. Okay. Mm. So for 82 by 38, that mm. is the target. That is okay. Mm. And pulse rate so of more than 126. Mm. That is okay. Again. So then in again in uh, what should be the PCO2 target? It should be normal. Normal. Normal between 35 to 45. 45. So these are the target that you need to set in. Mm. So you have to ventilate You have to make sure that these settings have been mm. made. Mm. Mm. Visibility at this point, the child was not responding to any command or stimuli. Mm. Uh, so GCC is even BT M1. So actually we uh, started him on target temperature management. Targeted temperature uh, management. So How will you do so that? We can actually go by two means. One mm. is actually we can maintain. The simple thing is maintain normothermia, normothermia for five days. Five days. Normothermia for five days. Mm. That is the easiest thing. Mm. So we have to aggressively like manage whenever any fever spikes are there, we have to immediately bring it down to the normal thermia. Okay. And we manage that for five days. Five days. Or we can even try for 36 to 30, 30 to 36 degree for two days. Then the remaining three days we can keep normal thermia. Okay. So in this child, we went for the normal this thing, normal thermia only. So whenever there was any chance of fever spike, we immediately give antibiotics and maintain the normal thermia. Okay. And again, we reassessed the GR base was 108. Okay. And also, we started some IO fruits at this point. Okay. And given all supportive care. So, after this, the child was admitted in our intensive care unit for further management. Further management. So, uh, what, what we have seen is a child who had come with probably post seizure. Mm. The child would have aspirated, mm. or it can be said reason due to hypoxia due to mm. uh, central cause. Omitted also. Omitted so. also. So, aspiration, central cause that looks like a hypoxic cardiac arrest. Mm. And the child was resuscitation. Initially, the system was asystole. Mm. So, you continued with your CPR and your adrenaline. Then you got an shockable rhythm. So, at that time, you went ahead with the defibrillation. Mm. And after two cycles of defibrillation, you get got an. Uh, uh, pulse. Pulse and as well as you got an organized rhythm. Mm. So then you have uh, stopped your CPR mm. and you have called that this child has achieved return of spontaneous circulation. Mm. So after, after achieving the return of spontaneous circulation, you went ahead with the mm. post cardiac arrest care where the targets needed to be maintained. Mm. Mm. Where the airway you need to secure if not secure. If the advanced airway was not placed initially, we need to place that. Mm. Breathing the targets, the saturation, the targeted saturation, 94 to 98 percentage we need to maintain, 99 percentage we need to maintain. And PCO2, normal PCO2 we mm. need to maintain and mm. hypotension above the 50th percentile mm. we need to maintain. Mm. So that has been done mm. and the child has been shifted to the intensive care mm. unit. Okay. What else you have? To... <coughs> we... 
so just showing some this thing what is, is this it's a bros cloth tape pediatric uh, tape so in case of any pediatric emergency we don't know like we are not able to like get a, like the current uh, current recommendation uh, what 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 is the required body weight. Uh, body weight of the child it's difficult you can mm. use this tape and uh. if the child is lying down like this you can keep the tape like this and whichever the color codes that is coming for example it is red here mm. and you can just see what is the required uh, required this for the child yeah, dosages dosages and these are just some uh, normal values for the vital signs vital. for the different age groups mm. it's very difficult to remember this mm. because we can whenever you have a patient we can go and refer mm. or you can keep these things available in the ed so that you can have a quick reference mm. and then again this is actually red flag red flag red flag is actually in the morning which we can actually uh, remember the emergency uh, dosages and all that so w is for weight and e is for energy that is actually 2 to 4 joules which you already discussed okay uh, tube is aged by 4 plus 4 or 3.5 in case of and so basically what they say is that whenever yeah. a pediatric patient come mm. you write down the wet flag in your case sheet mm. what is the weight of the child what is the required energy for shock energy what is the tube that is required for the child mm. what is the bolus fluid that is given to the child mm. what is the dose of lorazepam if needed adrenaline and dextrose mm. so you prepare this and keep it ready mm. so rather than thinking at that time what is the dosage to calculate whenever the child see the basically the children will not be brought in cardiac arrest always they will be uh, in a peri arrest before the scenario and they uh, will go into cardiac arrest so before that you prepare this and keep it ready with you so that whatever is the diameter what tube diameter all those things you need not calculate during the time of arrest so that is the basic intention of doing this so next thing is actually tubes formula okay uh, so the first one we already discussed but if you are planning to like put an ng tube or og tube we can use twice the et, ET tube, tube which you already calculated and the same for fold is also okay and all the et tube depth will be three times the et tube length si length and S size of the et tube, of the tube. and by any two point if you want to put a chest tube it will be four into the size of the et tube et tube okay and finally we have a qr code actually if you are able to like if you scan this one we will get all the updated the latest aha guidelines aha guidelines 2022 guidelines, 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 guidelines mm, adult as well as and neonatal okay so all the resuscitation algorithms whatever mm. you have kept mm. you will be able to get that mm. okay how so, is the child now he is in the intensive care okay okay thank you thank you